everybody. Today, during our free online class for Coronacation, we are going to make cake pops. So, jumping right in. Um, yesterday, if you didn't watch, I'm just going to refer you back there. We're not going to talk so much about the baking aspect, but we bake cakes. Um, if you want some tips and tricks, really recommend go back to yesterday's video on icing the cake. And we've got quite a bit in there. It's all right at the beginning of the show, from, or the video from yesterday, okay? But I have our cake that we baked yesterday during our little class. And I've already mashed up most of this to get ready for our cake pops because I figured you really didn't want to sit here and watch me run the food processor for too long. But I do want to show you. So with cake pops, you basically are using any baked cake that you have. Um, I know a lot of people when they level their cakes off, they will just save the toppers for that, throw it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, if you just bake a cake to make cake pops, you can go ahead and just let your cake cool down. And then once it's ready, you basically need to break it up. Okay. Um, one thing before I go too much further, I do want to let everyone know, be sure and comment, just say hi, give a shout out, whatever. Let us know that you're here. We are... We have a random number already picked, and the person who happens to be that number, just giving us a comment to let us know that you're here. We have a prize package for you today. We'll see if Eric can zoom down in here real quick just to show you what we're doing. We're going to give away some of the items that we're using in today's demo. Um, I haven't necessarily decided if we're going to do a giveaway every day, but so far we have. So we'll have a lucky winner getting this. We'll announce that towards the end. But again, just be sure and comment. Let us know that you're here so we can get your name wrote down and get you entered, okay? All right, back to cake pops. So as I mentioned, you do want to break up your cake once it's been baked. Okay, sometimes if you don't have a food processor, you absolutely can sit here and just kind of crumble it up, okay? Now, we'll have Eric zoom in on this for us. As you can see, you get kind of bigger crumbs with that. Okay. Is that showing up good for everybody? All right. So, gosh, I'm going to say probably two years ago, I think, I bought one of the cake pop rollers and... I was being a good little student, followed the directions inside. They said, use a food processor. Of course, when I read it, I'm sitting there thinking, what? No way, this is gonna make a mess and I'm gonna have a bunch of like, icky raw cookie dough type texture thing. But I went ahead and did what she said and tried it. So for that, I'm just popping my cake into the food processor. Throw that away. This is a bit of our messy day today. That's okay. It'll be worse when I do the candy video. All right, so we've got our cake in our food processor and I'm just gonna pulse it here for a couple quick seconds, okay? some of that back in here. That might be too much for you to be able. I want to spread this out a little bit so you can see. It breaks everything up really nice and you get a really, a lot more consistent crumble with it. Okay. So I was super happy with that. And so yes, I absolutely like that method. So thank you to the developers of the cake pop rollers for that. 
Now the other thing that they suggested was to put your icing or whatever binding ingredient you're going to use with this into your food processor also. I will tell you, if you want to do that, go right ahead and do that. Um, however, when you do that, you get a very, very, um, I guess the best way to describe it is a raw cookie dough type texture from it. And everyone that I had tried that did not like it at all. Okay. So I went back to, yes, I'll use the food processor to break it up because I do love that. But then I'm going to do what I had always done for my cake pops. And that is simply to just kind of hand blend. All right. So I have the rest of my cake here that I crumbled up earlier before we went live. Now for mixing up your cake pop, I guess, I don't know, not really batter, but your, the dough sort of for it. This is just some buttercream icing. Okay. And you don't want to use a huge amount when you put this in. You just want enough so when you go to pick up your cake, it's almost kind of like a sand, wet sand, like what you would make a sand castle out of type. Okay, um, hopefully that works as a good description for everybody. But you want it so when you pick it up and pinch it together, it's going to stay together, okay? Now, I have seen over the years different people saying, oh, for make up one box of cake mix and then do one can, as in like your Betty Crocker, Duncan Hines, cans of pre-made frosting. You absolutely, 100% wholeheartedly do not need that much frosting in there, I promise you. Okay, I'm going to start out with just like two tablespoons and I may even have to put some more cake back in there because that may be too much for this. In fact, Jess, I'm pretty sure that is way too much for this. Okay. And in watching... This is one of those definitely get some gloves to do this type project unless you don't mind the mess but it is as you can see it is a, a bit messy i'm just gently kind of working through here just to get this so it'll stick together okay now we're going to have eric zoom in here again i'll hold some up in my hand so you can see you can actually see great big clumps of frosting in there, okay? That, I put too much frosting for this little bit of cake in there. <coughs> so I'm just gonna grab a little bit more out of my bag here. And put that in. And I just grabbed a small handful, maybe, Three quarter, half cup, three quarters cup, right in there. Nothing too significant. Okay, so we've got that mixed together. Now, if you are not too fussy about the size, you can just grab some out. And if you notice, I'm not really sitting here doing this rolling because the more you work it, the gooier it's gonna get, okay? So that was more so kind of what we don't wanna do. I usually just gently pat it together just until everything sticks together. And that will give you a lot nicer texture. This is something, um, Honestly, as you play with it more, you'll get a little better feel. 
for what I'm talking about. I know some of this is hard to get with the camera. Okay, just a second, I gotta switch. Get some new gloves on here. Go through lots of gloves doing this. Okay, and for those of you just joining us, don't forget, be sure and just do a quick, hey, how you doing, or hello, whatever. Let us know you're out there. We are doing a prize pack here. I'll have Eric zoom down in again real quick just to show you. We're doing a giveaway for people watching during the video. And then we also have a question. Oh, we have a question. So can you use a cookie scoop? Cookie scoop, yes, that is my next up. That's why I switched gloves. <laughs> I wanted my hands to be clean to show you this. So this is just a cookie scoop. Okay, you can get these at supply stores, any most kitchen supply, buy your spatulas and type stuff. You can get those there. Okay. So if you are like me and tend to be a little OCD on everything being the same size, which I, I will say, I absolutely use my cookie scoop all the time when I'm doing these. I was just showing you how to do it first without them if you wanted. Okay, so with the cookie scoop, I do still go back and just gently put it into a circle because you've got that flat side on the back. Okay. So I'm just kind of gently, as I say, I don't want to do a whole lot of rolling and overwork our dough here. Just getting them put together like that, okay? So that is the basics as far as actually making making them into your balls to get ready, okay? So I also want to talk a little bit before I go into dipping and everything, working with the chocolate. I want to go talk to you a little bit about different flavors and combinations that you can do, okay? This one, obviously, you just watched. All I put in was just some straight buttercream, okay? Then comes the fun. Experiment, people. So, probably one of my absolute favorite combinations, anyone who knows me, I love almonds. Blue diamonds are my favorite. Yo, Blue Diamond. <laughs> um, but something that I found I really like, and a lot of our customers have liked too with different samples I've done over the years and stuff, is adding some raspberry flavor. So chocolate, raspberry, and almonds goes amazing together. Um, strawberry also is really good in there. And this is some Loran oil flavoring. And I'm just going to put a couple drops in. Always start with a little bit, work up from there. Okay? And then I'm going to take my almonds and I have a little mini food processor back here. Eric, can we see that on camera okay? Yeah. Zoom in on it. Here you go. Okay. This is just a little mini food processor. So awesome for doing something quick like this where you just need a few nuts chopped up or if you're making a carrot cake or something, you need your carrots chopped up and some of your nuts or whatever you're adding in. This is great. It is a little noisy with the nuts. Sorry, give me just a sec. And we do have another question when you're ready. Okay, we have another question. So what is your opinion of the cake ball roller on the market? Worth the money? Question mark. If you are doing, okay, the question was, what is um, my opinion on the cake pop roller that's on the market? I think I have one. I think I've still got one in stock I can show you maybe. Yeah, Eric, back behind those boxes. Sorry, just a sec. We'll show you what what they're talking about. Um, I will say that if you are doing, this is what the cake pop rollers 
Can we zoom in on here? Let me hold that steady. Yep. Zoom in on the picture here so they can see what they are. They are super awesome if you're doing a lot of cake pops. Absolutely worth the money. Yes. Um, if you're if it's something you just want to play with. There, did we get that zoomed in good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what the cake pop roller is. What I found, what I liked, um, I took my scooper, scooped these out, and I just dropped them down in. So I basically had, you know, my sections. But then you literally just set the top down on, and you roll it back and forth a couple times, and you've got everything is all rolled. You don't have to do anything with it. So they are awesome for that. I absolutely, yes, do it, do it. But, um... Again, if you're not doing, you know, some some of these toys, sure, we'd all love to have every toy on the market. But some of them you got to be a little realistic and stop and think, am I going to use that enough to justify? If you're doing four, six, eight dozen cake pops every week, good golly, yes, I would be getting one of those. But, you know, if you're just starting out, doing maybe... You know, you get someone ordered two dozen of them or something. Wait and see how your cake pop sales go. Okay. So this, I just stirred in the few drops of the raspberry, some chopped up almonds. And you mix that in with some more cake. Okay. Um, another really yummy combination with the chocolate is to do peanut butter. Who doesn't love Reese's peanut butter cups, right? So for that, I just I chopped up some peanuts earlier. Okay, same thing I did with the almonds. These I did let run a little bit more to get them a little finer. So those I'm going to actually. Oh here. No. We're gonna mix some of that up real quick just to show you. So we're going to mix some of our frosting and then I'm just taking some peanut butter. Okay, just some creamy peanut butter. You could also absolutely use some chunky peanut butter for this. But then I'm going to put in some chopped peanuts too. Okay, stir that all together. All right, don't forget to comment, everybody, and say hi. Let us know you're here so we can get you entered for the giveaway today. All right, peanut butter, a little bit of buttercream frosting, and some chopped peanuts. All right, I am going to... I actually have a fair amount of that. I'm going to take about half of it out just for a minute. Get some cake mixed in and see if I need any more first. Okay, and again, I'm just kind of gently basically finger blending this all right and again I have seen you know I've sat and watched demos over the years or been in classes and whatnot where they about right put these back in their mixer like a KitchenAid stand mixer they've taken a hand blender back to this I personally am just I'm not a fan of that purely because I think it makes it very doughy in the consistency but again don't don't sit here and take what I'm saying as gospel by any means try different methods out see what you like okay can we do a reminder on the giveaway someone asked like what's the giveaway oh the, yes we said somebody asked to see what the giveaway is 
Eric's going to shoot down in and show you that real quick. And while you're looking at that, get signed up, comments, let us know you're here so you can get entered. I'll make a couple of these peanut butter ones. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. And then also, are they good frozen for later? Okay, I'll... Um, our next question was, are these good to freeze them? Obviously, you can look at me and see I don't freeze too much and leave it sitting. <laughs> we eat the stuff here. <laughs> um, okay, but seriously, the when you freeze anything, because these are going to be dipped in chocolate, so if you are going to freeze them, my personal recommendation would be to freeze them once you have them rolled like this and then pull them out, let them thaw and dip them. Um, my expectation, if you froze them dipped, I would expect they were going to crack when you pulled them back out and thawed them out just from the expansion from the cold to the warm. Okay. <coughs> So, we have our cake pops made, or formed anyways. Now, let's work on dipping them. Get some of this stuff set aside real quick. Okay, I'm going to start my microwave back up. So, we are working, I'll have Eric zoom in here. I'm using Merkins chocolates, and we're adding some Paramount crystals, okay? I don't want to get like super, super in depth as far as the whole candy making and chocolate stuff. Um, I was, we're going to be doing a candy video during one of these free classes, probably next week, I'm guessing. Um, so if you're, you know, interested more on the chocolate and stuff, absolutely come back for that. All kinds of info for that. But I have chocolate. This one happens to be milk. This is our dark over here that I've already pre-melted. This is some Paramount Crystals. I just keep them in a bigger tub. I am super, super finicky about measuring, you can tell. Roughly, I'd say probably have about three quarters of a pound of chocolate in there-ish. Um, I probably put about two tablespoons of the Paramount Crystals in, okay? The reason for the Paramount Crystals, it thins down your chocolate, okay? What it does, it also softens the bite, all right? Um, if you happen to be using Wilton chocolates, I know, for example, uh, I'm... I will just say it, I'm not a huge fan of them. They have so much wax in them. Typically, what I hear a lot of people saying, I tried making some cake pops, and when I dipped them, they were all chunky looking when I pulled them out of the chocolate, okay? More than likely, it's just a case of your chocolate itself. Could be old, that's always a possibility. Um, but more than anything, some Paramount Crystals you can use to thin it down, and that will generally take care of the problem, okay? So the other thing that the Paramount Crystals do is they soften the bite. And what I mean by that, when if you've ever eaten a chocolate dip pretzel, a chocolate dip strawberry, for example, that one is probably the most common where people know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. When you bite into it, the rest of the chocolate that didn't get in your mouth for the first bite shatters and falls down everywhere on you, okay? The Paramount Crystals will stop that. So when you bite into it, it keeps the chocolate a little bit softer so it doesn't crack, shatter, and fall off what you're working on eating, okay? So typically a cake pop, if you've got two bites, okay, we have a question, give me one sec here. 
So when you bite into this, you want the rest of the chocolate to stay there and not shatter away. So if you put the Paramount Crystals in, that's going to take care of that problem for you. And we have a question, yes. Okay, can you use coconut oil if you don't have the crystals? Can you use coconut oil? Yes, you can. Okay, um, I don't have recommendations as far as how much or anything because I, I always use the Paramount Crystals. Honestly, whenever I'm making any chocolates, I add Paramount to it just because I never know if I'm going to end up dipping or not. Um, my guess would be with the coconut, you're going to use about the same amount if you use the coconut oil. One thing to watch out though, uh, make sure you don't have any allergies, okay? Because there are, I know coconut is one of them people have allergies to. Um, my other thing I would recommend is try and get the unflavored because there's some that, that has... I don't know if it's completely unflavored, but you don't taste the coconut as much, apparently. So you're not adding that to it. Um, another thing we get asked, can you use vegetable oil? Again, my same concern would be with the vegetable oil, you're going to get that taste added into your chocolate. So if you have to in a pinch, go for it, but use it very sparingly, okay? And we have another question. Um, someone just said, can you use regular chocolate chips? Chocolate chips. Are we talking, someone asked if you can use chocolate chips. I'm assuming you mean like this? I'm assuming, yeah. Is that, okay, with that assumption in mm -hmm. mind, these are baking chips. These are confectionery coating. Two totally different things, okay? The Merkins, Wilton, all these different brands. There's Peters, Klassen, all different types of this. This is made just to be melted and used for this type of setting. Um, your chocolate chips have a lot higher wax content. They're a completely different type of chocolate, okay? These are made to withstand your oven. They're made to go up to 375 degrees to make your yummy cookies. So that's, yes, in a pinch you can use it, but taste-wise, night and day difference what you're gonna get <clears throat> between the two, okay? Then we have a couple more. Okay, a couple more questions, yeah. So one's for a recipe that you can put in, it's a last for later. But then another one, two of them were, do the crystals help with chocolate hardening while dipping? And what are the crystals made of? Okay. The crystals are made of a palm kernel oil. All right. A hydrogenated palm kernel oil. So, um, and then do they help with setting it up? I honestly, I always use it, so I guess I don't. As I don't know what it's you're asking as opposed to what. <laughs> so um, you'll see when we're working here. Mine typically. Now I'm gonna say this, but I don't know how this is gonna work today because we have some extra lights on, so you guys can see better in here. So it's a little warmer than I normally have it. Um, I typically have my room around 65 degrees or so. Everything tends to set up pretty quick. In here for me and then can you also use cocoa butter can you use cocoa butter yes yes you can use same thing with the coconut oil um, cocoa butter that will thin it down as well now the cocoa butter I do believe is going to set up that will speed your setup okay but as far as to what extent that I don't have a good answer but I do know that sets up a lot firmer. That's going to speed your setup up. Now we're all caught up. <laughs> okay. Now we are caught up with questions. So back to our cake pops. Now we're going to do a couple different ways of dipping today. Okay. So I have some sticks. These happen to be some of our, uh, they're brown, but um, most people refer to them as craft color. They're kind of like the grocery bags. There's white ones, there's different colored ones, all sorts of stuff. Today in the giveaway, we have 
we're actually giving some straws away. So you can use straws, you can use sticks, or you don't have to use anything. That's up to you. Now, one thing to bear in mind, if you are going to put everything on a stick, I'd probably the most common problem, or yeah, I guess I'd say problem. Um, people will come in and ask me, my cake pops are falling off my sticks. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Most every video or when I ask people, what are you doing? This is the response I get back what they're doing. They're dipping their stick in and putting it down in their cake pop. Okay. When you just did that, Okay, let me use a little bit bigger stick here just to show you. If you have a closed hole and you push a stick down in, you're opening that hole up, all that chocolate is just going to come sit on the surface. It's not actually inside the hole where you need it for the stick to hang on to anything. So. My biggest, biggest recommendation, if you're putting sticks on, do what I call pre-drill, okay? <coughs> so, just run through all of your pops and put little holes in them, okay? Once you do that, then you can just take a disposable pastry bag. These, by the way, are our tipless bags okay we have those in new now these are a lot thinner and softer than the traditional disposable pastry bags that have been around for years and years all right these work great for chocolate um, they work great for thin down royal icing they do not work so great for standard buttercream while you're doing piping and such, like to pipe your borders or pipe flowers or something like that. They're not a thicker plastic made to withstand that, okay? Um, what's the main difference with the tipless bags too, aside from being a little bit softer and thinner plastic, they only have one seam on them, okay? So when you cut those, just put the seam facing up and put a little, do a little snip. And then where I pre-drilled, hopefully Eric is zooming right in here. I'm going to put some chocolate down inside there and then go put our stick down in. So our stick now has some chocolate to stick to inside and it will hold it in place. Okay. Someone noticed that your chocolate didn't thicken as it was sitting there. Is that due to the crystals or is there another reason? This right here? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's still warm. It's starting to thicken up. I don't know if you can see on the sides of it and stuff. I can tell it's starting to thicken up. And you can see some there on the edges of my spoon and stuff where I'm scraping. So it is starting to cool down and thicken up a little bit. Definitely thicker than it was when I pulled it out of the microwave, like a lot thicker than when I pulled it out of the microwave. Um, but also, as I mentioned, it is definitely warmer in this area than I typically would have it to. Okay. So, the chocolate has already set up down inside there. All right. And... We're just going to dip that in, pull out, and I'm just going to kind of gently rotate it a little bit. Do not sit here and shake this like crazy. If it um, thickens, can you just warm it up again? Yes, absolutely. Um, question was, if the chocolate thickens up too much, can you just warm it back up? Absolutely. Okay. So there, we have one dipped. Now, two options, you can, one second, let me go grab something real quick that I forgot to get out here. Okay, 
This is just a little styrofoam, the green styrofoam you get at the craft stores. Okay. You can do that and not have any marks. Okay. If you're not overly concerned with having any marks, you can dip that. Just let most of your excess drip off there. You got most of it. And then just sit it down. Okay. I am not okay with how much just puddled up there. So I'm going to lift that back up and set it back down right there. All right. And then uh, another question. Could you do the same um, chocolate dipping process with donut holes? Yes. Uh, question was, could you do the same dipping process with donut holes? Absolutely. Um, the other thing you could do, I've seen, I think they call them, cake pop bakers maybe something like that the pans where it actually essentially makes a little donut hole type item with your cake and if you have one of those pans or one of those baking i think it's like a flip almost looks like a waffle maker type item um if you make those i don't consider that a cake pop per se because the cake pops are usually the intention of that is that it's crumbled and you're putting some frosting in there as a binding agent. You're adding flavors and such to it. Okay. Um, so if you do those, yes, you absolutely can do this, you know, same process what I'm showing you here. And again, just be sure the biggest thing when you're putting the sticks in, be sure and pre-drill. Okay. Put your hole in there, put a little chocolate down inside there and then, then go ahead with that, okay? Then the other thing you can do, if you just want to hand dip those, so we'll take one of our peanut butter ones here, and there are fancy dipping tools that you can purchase. We actually are giving away a set with our giveaway today. Um, you can use those. Dip down in, lift back out. Someone asked, can we coat with sprinkles or coconut like flakes? De definitely. Okay. That I'm kind of going to show you here. As I dip that, these are some of my chopped peanuts. Okay. Adding those before I set this down. You can do the same thing. <coughs> okay, here I have some sugar crystals. I'll put some of those on one for you. And I'm also going to show you real quick using, this is just the icing spatula. Okay, if you don't have the dipping tools, no worries. And if you notice, I'm tapping. If I'm doing something like this, I am going to tap, get the excess off there. Oh, I just teetered that on there, sorry. Okay, come over, set that down. Put your sprinkles on. Anything that you're going to add on, you wanna do that while your chocolate's wet, okay? The other thing you can do is striping with another chocolate. You can do a flavored chocolate just to add to it. I had some little peanut butter wafers here, but we're not going to melt those and mess around with it too much. Um, so I'm just going to show you with the chocolate here that, oh no, I'm not this set up. Oops. Ah, okay. We just got a little squirt. We can do this. So if you have melted chocolate, there, you can just do some striping. Okay, bear in mind, guys, when you look at that, this chocolate is just about set up, okay? I had to squeeze a bunch out just to, because it's already thickening up so bad. If you have nice warm chocolate and you have a very small hole, work fast back and forth, you will get super nice looking, real detailed little lines on it, okay? We got a slew of questions. Oh, we have a slew of questions. All right, what do we got? Okay. 
How long have you been in the cake business? How long have I been in the cake business? Okay. I started doing cakes. Um, oh, I'm not going to give an age. We'll just <laughs> leave it at. Uh, I did wedding, mainly wedding cakes and such, um, for about 22 years, I believe. <clears throat> um, entered several competitions and stuff, and I have judged competitions, been teaching classes, whatnot, along the way with that, and now I just own the supply store. Um, and I've been doing, I stopped doing cakes, I think about eight years ago now. Actually, when my kids hit high school, I was not about to miss football games on Thursday and Friday nights, so I knew I would become quite bitter with the cakes, and I didn't want to get to that point. And we opened our store up, so I've just been focusing on the supplies and teaching classes when I have time and doing that. Can you fill the cake pops with strawberry like you can cupcakes? With a strawberry filling? That, yeah. Okay, so to fill the cake pop... You would basically need to have something thick enough that you could, well, a couple options. Thick enough that you could roll it into a ball and then wrap your cake pop around it. Um, other option would be, and this you would have to test your filling that you're thinking about. If you can freeze it enough so you can get a little chunk of it, then yes, you absolutely, you can put your pop around it. Okay, this will work. You can, like I said, form it around something. You just have to be able, it's going to depend on what you're using for a filling, okay? Um, if you want to use, like, say, the raspberry filling that we used yesterday in our video where we were, um, we put that in the cake, you may have to take some gelatin, like some unflavored gelatin, mix that with some water, and cook it on the stove a little bit just to thicken it up some, okay? Um... You know, I, I don't have a super good answer. You basically, you need to be able to form it into a ball of some sort, whether it's in a frozen state so you can get it into a ball real quick and then put your cake pop mix around it. Um, or if it's already solid, like some of your candy fillings, uh, you could take a caramel, make a caramel ball, and put your stuff around it. So absolutely, yes, you can put a filling in there. A lot of recipes say to put in fridge after forming balls before dipping. I noticed you didn't do that. Do you not recommend this? Okay. The reason I did not put it in the fridge. Cold contracts expands. Okay. I have found that anytime I have put this in the fridge, in the freezer, whatever, nine times out of ten, the chocolate ends up cracking. Okay. If you notice everything that we did here. I have nothing cracked because I was not working. If you take a cold cake pop, dip it into warm chocolate, you're going to have a reaction, okay? Um, just by nature, you know, same as with your wood on your house, for example. When it gets cold, you know, real cold in the winter and then the sun pops out, it, everything, it contracts, expands. That's just nature of the beast, okay? Um, so no, I personally, I don't put anything in the freezer, in the fridge, nothing. I just, I get everything rolled out that I want to do, and then I go through, back through and dip it. Okay? And the last one, can I use normal chocolate butter cake for this process? Normal chocolate butter cake. Do you mean buttercream, maybe? If you mean buttercream, absolutely. Um, but you can use any type as far as the cake itself you should be able to use any type cake the main thing is just that you get enough binder in there once you if you pick it up and kind of just you know squeeze it in your hand a little bit it's going to stick together for you and then can you make the balls ahead of time freeze and then bring them back to room temp before dipping okay um yes question assuming you just heard that from eric as he read that off, um, if you're going to freeze your cake pops, I would roll them first, freeze them, then bring them back completely to room temperature. That would be my personal advice. And then go ahead and dip them. Okay. Um, like I said, I, I know many people, it's their standard practice to freeze them, 
and dip them while they're frozen. I Every time I've tried that, just to see if it makes a difference, like I said, nine times out of ten, my cake balls are cracking. It may be an hour down the road, so if you dip them and end up packaging them real quick, go back and look at them a few hours later and see, okay? So, we have, um, oh, I want to let you know, I do have some different recipe flavor combinations that I hand out when we do the class here in the store. I will get that posted online, okay? What I did yesterday, I just made a separate post, and I'll probably do that again today. Um, I'll put links to some of the products that we use, to the Paramount Crystals and different things, um, so you can find those easily if you're looking to purchase something. FYI, we are shipping daily. Uh, we are closed right now with the pandemic going on, but um, as far as for walk-in traffic, but we are still shipping everything daily, okay? On that note, if you want to order something, I'm going to have Eric pop this in front of the screen real quick. We are doing a coupon code today. Mm -hmm. We are not going to do this every day. Today we are going to do that where we are giving you 20% off if you order by 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then also all orders over $50, we're giving you a free bag of chocolate as well. Okay? Must use code. Yes, be sure and put the code on there to get the discount, okay? It's not just going to automatically give you the discount if you go place an order. You do have to use that, that code. And like I said, that will be shut off at 3 o'clock. Okay? So, we have a winner for today's drawing. And that winner is... Laura Hartman. Laura Hartman. I think... That is one of our regular customers that comes in, I believe. Either way, congratulations, Laura. Um, be sure, if it's not the Laura I'm thinking of, um, be sure to send me your address and stuff. If it's Laura I'm thinking of, if you want to just wait till next time you come in, that's fine. Or I can ship this out to you today. Either way. Um, but send me a message through our Cape Connection Facebook page. Send me your address and we'll either get it shipped out or make arrangements to get this to you. Okay, if you have any other questions, if you're watching this after we're done today, if you have any other questions, please feel free to post in the comments. I'm trying my best to keep an eye on them, and I'll be answering as I see stuff pop up. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we will not be here on Saturday or Sunday, but I will be back on Monday through Friday next week, and we will be doing some more live demo classes. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.